Morning. So in this video, we are going to talk about non-specific defenses that our body is going to use to protect itself against what we call pathogens. So pathogens are the bad guys. So there are two lines of defense that our body is going to use to protect ourselves against these bad guys, these pathogens. Non-specific pathways, which is going to be the focus of this video, and then the next videos are going to be about the specific defenses. All right. And the, as it's in the name, the specific defenses are very specific to the specific target that we are trying to remove from the body. So with that said, this video might be a little bit longer because we're going to talk about all the non specific pathways, but, um, the important thing is this, it's not specific it's in the name. So the job is to guard against really any pathogen. That's the job. We're going to try to make sure nothing gets in. And if it does, we take care of it. So let's start off with mechanical barriers. So a mechanical barrier is something that is a barrier. Something that tries to prevent you from getting in. That's mechanical. All right. So before we even get into this, all of these, these non-specific pathways, I keep wanting to say these specific, non-specific pathways. It doesn't make any sense, All right? Before we get into these non-specific pathways, I want to just make sure we have a, a metaphor that we can go back to. And let's say our metaphor is we have a castle, right? I know this is silly, but maybe this is a way to help you remember it. Let's say we have a castle and our little castle, I'm going to try to draw one as I talk. Our little castle is, um, it, we want to make sure nothing gets into our castle. Right, so that we have different barriers set up to make sure nothing can get in. Okay, and this is the ugliest castle in the world, but I tried. So if we're talking about a castle, the very first thing is the walls. Right, we don't even think about that, but like just we have walls to the building. If you can't get through the walls, you can't get in. So in that case, our body, because our body is a castle, um, is our skin. Right, so we have the skin that makes sure nothing can get in. We also have a moat that goes around the castle, right? That could be our mucous membranes, right? The mucous membranes we have in our nose, in our mouth, for example, right? So if you inhale, you smell, you, you breathe through your nose and some pathogens get up and in there, they can get caught in the mucus of your nose. And then you can, you know, blow, blow your nose or you may sneeze it out, right? So the point is there are multiple mechanical barriers that just Literally just don't let the pathogen get in. So mechanical barriers, just stopping the pathogen from getting in. Next, we have chemical barriers. So in this case, now our castle is armed. We have a few things that we can use to try and destroy any of the pathogens if they do get past that first mechanical barrier. All right, so the first one here is with our body, we have highly acidic environments within our body, right? One of them might be one that makes sense to, you, to all of us, which is our gastric juices of our stomach. So maybe if we eat something that has bacteria in it that shouldn't be in our body, um, these gastric juices will break it down, right? Um, and then something we don't really think about, our tears, right? We have lysosomes. This is another example of a chemical barrier that might break down certain bacteria or pathogens that try to get in that way through our eyes. We also have uh, hormones that we release called interferons. I love the names of these sometimes, right? They interfere. Uh, the interferons are these hormone-like uh, peptides that are going to serve as an antiviral. So in other words, if a virus gets into your cell, so here's my cell. If a virus gets in to my cell, my cell will produce an interferon, which I guess is that little purple thing. The interferon will interfere with the virus to make sure that that virus cannot produce more viruses. So it's our it's, a, it's an example of a chemical our body will produce to stop that virus from being able to spread. If that doesn't make much sense, what's supposed to happen? Viruses like to get into your body. When the virus gets in, it's going to affect your DNA and produce more virus so it can spread out to the body 
into other cells to infect more cells to make more virus and so on. Right, that's how it spreads. So interferons stop that from happening. Again, if I'm going too quick, don't be afraid to pause the video. A couple other non-specific defenses, right? So if you get sick, again, generally speaking, a lot of times you might get a fever, right? Believe it or not, this is this is intentional. So the fever uh, is a protection that our body is going to do in order to one uh, reduce the amount of iron in our blood and create fewer uh, available nutrients. That sounds kind of weird, but it's because you have different bacteria or a pathogen that may want to use those nutrients too, and those might help them grow, which is not a good thing. Um, the other thing too is there are certain uh, phagocytes in our cells that perform better when they're warmer, right? So the fever is actually going to help our defense cells uh, to work faster and more efficiently. So even though you may not feel the best, a fever to a certain degree is a good thing. But remember, fevers are a negative feedback loop, right? You don't want to go too high. That's bad, right? That's why we take medicines to calm our fever if it gets too high. We also have these natural killer cells, which are a type of lymphocyte. And their job is to, as we mentioned before, uh, roam around the body and recognize and destroy any abnormal cells. So these cells are just kind of just floating around. Um, imagine them kind of like the security guards of our castle. And they just roam around and they know everybody, right? So the security guards know all the people who live in the castle. And when they notice someone who's acting funny or someone who doesn't belong there, they are going to take care of it. And it's a little dramatic, but they're going to destroy those individuals who shouldn't be there. One of the way they do that is by using uh, perforins which basically, um, I mean, just, yeah, the job of it is to essentially punch holes into the cell membrane of the bad cell. So if this is my bad cell up here, the perforin is going to just basically just stab holes. I'm going to use this the way it's going to punch holes into the membrane of the cells and therefore destroy it. Uh, this probably is not the best example of it. However, in my mind, the way I kind of look at this is like just like, you know, Voldemort at the end of Harry Potter, how he starts to just flake away. Um, that's kind of what you're seeing with the cells when uh, perforins are attached to that invader cell. This can also be your own cells. So if you have something that is uh, a cell that's infected by a virus or a cancer cell, these natural killer cells job is to identify them and take care of them. Inflammation, another one. We talked about this briefly earlier. So your tissues, if there's a pathogen in one of your tissues, it can it can cause the inflammation of those tissues. So it becomes red, it starts to swell, it gets warm, it might hurt. But what's happening here is your blood vessels are going to dilate. When your blood felt when your blood vessels dilate, they get bigger which means there is more blood. And when there's more blood, that means you have more white blood cells. If you have more white blood cells in the area, they have the ability to, um, one, permeate through the blood vessel so they can escape the blood vessel and go into the tissues and um, fight off whatever is in that tissue. You may also see fibroblasts specifically. They can appear in these areas and um, activate uh, phagocytosis. So in other words, they're just going to come in and they're going to help replace whatever tissue is broken down in that area. So that's another picture. So let's say this is your tissue. So this is at the top of your skin. Um, you have the blood vessels with the blood flowing through here. Right? Um, if we break something into the skin here, and it brings in stuff we don't want. One, the white blood cells are gonna come in. They're gonna leave the blood vessels. And they're gonna help fight that area. They're gonna try to eliminate all the bad guys, right? So your white blood cells are gonna try to destroy the foreign pathogens. 
but because something punctured the skin, again, this red line here is skin, if you didn't, if I wasn't clear in this case, um, we're also going to have other cells come in and they, uh, they're going to be the fibroblasts and their job is to try to fix this tissue. They want to fix the hole, right? And repair it. Here are some possible major actions with the inflammation response. So this goes in a little more detail. Also just kind of outlines it, everything I just talked about. Uh, phagocytosis, mentioned this very briefly a second ago, right? So again, uh, most active uh, uh, phagocytes are gonna be the neutrophils. Ooh, I went too far. Sorry about that. Are gonna be the neutrophils and uh, the monocytes. So these particles are going to leave the bloodstream just like I showed in that last image, um, how they're going to leave through the bloodstream and fight off whatever um, pathogens may have entered the tissue. So just to do it again, you can skip over this if it's, you know, if you if it makes sense to you. So here's your skin on the top. Here's your blood vessels. You have all the red blood cells in there, but also some white blood cells. The white blood cells are going to go through. Specifically, in this case, those neutrophils and monocytes. And that's because something got into your body and they're going to fight them off. So they're going to go in there and try to fight them off. And again, here are the specific um, descriptions of these defenses. I apologize, I keep saying specific, right? So we are just finishing up now the non-specific defenses. Again, so going back to our castle, these are just general things our castle has to keep itself protected. We have the walls, we have the moat, we have the security guards, we have whatever um, general chemicals, I guess, or weaponry um, that we can use to defend ourselves, like we talked about with those acids. Um, we, we have, we're prepared, right? Generally speaking, if anyone tries to get into our castle, we can do whatever we can um, to just keep those people out. And if they do get in, we can eliminate them, right? The next part of this video or the next videos are going to be much more specific. So instead of just generally trying to uh, protect our castle, sometimes there's invaders who are much stronger, who are more unique and have skills that may evade our general defenses are non-specific defenses so we need to do something to make sure that we can specifically attack those pathogens so they do not spread and that's what those these future videos are going to be discussing if you have any questions please let me know